Today we are going to start a new franchise mode in NHL 22. We're going to start a franchise with the Arizona Coyotes. Um, the way that it's going to be set up is to start, I went through and grabbed five prospects from each different prospect pool. So drafted in 2019, drafted in 2020, and drafted in 2021. And as you can see on the bottom, added Mo Sider to add a defensive piece, added Lucas Raymond. And other than that, we'll try to build the prospect pool up. As you can see, 81 overall, quite weak, but let's get them built and let's turn them into a dynasty, or as a lot of the hockey people like to say, let's turn them into a wagon and get it going here. All right, so get everything set up and superstar, let's do it. Biggest thing that I like to do at the beginning of all of the franchise modes is try to bring in as many prospects as possible and try to get in as many draft picks as possible. So obviously with the Coyotes, we are sitting and looking at, right now we have three first rounds as well. The Colorado is gonna be a late first rounder. Uh, assuming the team will probably do pretty poorly the first year, the Coyotes top pick would be good. And depending on how the sim turns out, obviously the Canadians top pick would be pretty good. Try to flip these later drafts. As we all know, the 2022 and the 2023 draft are pretty stacked with uh, players like Brad Lambert, Shane Wright, as well as in 2023, obviously with Connor Bedard or Matsvei Mitskov. Um, so definitely wanna try and be able to pick up some more draft picks there. So that's usually a huge focus for me is to be able to go through and get as many draft picks as possible and try to really kind of build the team through the first couple of years, especially with a franchise like uh, the Coyotes, obviously, it's uh, a long way up the hill. So um, yeah, try to go through here and grab some players and dump some. Just throwing a fourth from 25. It's a few years down the road now. Kind of tough. They they really want to uh, really want to hold true to their their picks, which props to them for sure. So, okay, um, don't really want to give away the farm here or give away the, uh, the big prospect possibilities coming forward. But obviously, that's a that's a big piece to kind of build the team around a little bit. You know, put him on put him on defense. Uh, be able to get him on a right right side shot d-man maybe have him be a second line pairing guy you have bone byram possibly being a first line pairing guy so yeah own power would be a big guy for our top four to definitely be able to have there um yeah pretty important uh pretty important to be able to pick him up here to build around especially for this team and obviously with the contracts uh i'm not going to be able to sign or don't really want to get locked into too many long-term deals so probably going to lose a left side guy like Goss is there uh we obviously have Jake Chickeren as well so he's another left side guy so power would probably slot in as our two our second defensive pairing yeah okay so here for a minute um all right let's as far as trying to solidify the front end, we've got a pretty good up the middle. Let's try to. Kenzie Weger is a pretty good back end D man. Let's see what they'll maybe go for here. Ooh, I don't want to dump on Duhame. I really like him. I think he's a solid third, fourth line guy for the future. Go to Nashville here. I really, the guy that I really appreciate from Nashville is Tanner Janot. I really like him. Let's see what they'll maybe take. Obviously, Nick Schmaltz, that's a tough deal. Dezingle, not a bad deal. Mayo. Um, Galchenyuk, he's, uh, he's probably not going to be a guy that's going to stick around for a long time. Labushkin, he, uh, He's going to be another guy that, uh, one, again, one-year deal. They're all on one-year deals for Tanner Janot. So maybe let's try to... Hmm. Don't want to lose Prospect with Barrett Hayden either here. So let's 
Let's go Lavushin. Obviously, that's two D men down though. And Gelchenyuk. But if we sign Edvinson to a deal and put him in, in the AHL, he'll develop. Um, be able to do a late season call up with him, which is obviously pretty important um, for the growth and development. So, um, yeah, let's go. Uh, I, I think we're going to go here, kind of build off this one. Um, maybe try to throw in. They're wanting to get rid of some of their young draft picks as well, too. Some of their younger guys. Um, Zachary LaRue, he tends to develop pretty good, I think. Um, but I'm not going to chase him. He's a hit and miss guy. I mean, he was a you know big, big prospect at the World Juniors a couple years ago. hasn't uh, hasn't really panned out. So I'm not going to really go and jump all over trying to land on a, a grenade that they're going to throw. So let's try to do this. Let's try to get a 22 from them as well on top of to kind of come back at. So that's pretty close to if we're, you know, if we throw in a second, if we throw in a second round pick from 20, let's go 25 and let's throw in a 27, that's going to equal out to a first rounder from them roughly for the trade value if you look at the, the equality um i always like to try and throw in some late round because at the draft you can always uh double up and then uh dump those picks off for for later on picks or for some of the guys that are on the the draft draft deals uh you know for anybody that's played franchise in here before you know you can pick up some players in uh at the draft on some pretty huge deals actually so yeah, definitely like to have those picks to be able to swap straight across for some of those guys that are on expiring contracts. Get these back end draft picks as well. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so building the youth up, building the core up. So we're looking at our lowest end players. I mean, we got a guy like Louis Erickson making 12 million a year. That's a guy that's going straight to the minors. That, uh, that's a contract we got to get rid of. That's kind of the thing. I mean, uh, uh, Arizona is the is the dumping ground for, for a lot of teams. They have a lot of people just dump contracts off in, in the desert. So um, definitely have some players that you're, uh, you know, guys that are hanging on maybe later on, like a Dezingle. Dezingle's a good player, but, you know, really... If there was, uh, you know, competition, would he still be around? Probably not, you know. So we've got a pretty good core of players. I'm thinking guys that we kind of need to get rid of um, to get out from underneath their contracts are going to be as this season kind of progresses. Uh, a guy like Gost is there. He's going to be a guy that might be somebody to hang on to depending on what he wants financially. Um, Phil Kessel, Nick Schmaltz, those are going to be guys to know kind of really look at and uh and see where we're at so for our lines let's uh set our lines here kind of see what we're looking at so schmaltz is our our uh top center that's uh you know i mean that kind of proves where we're at i mean we got you know fisher is our third line winger raymond here Jano is our top center our top winger and then on the back end cider and Chikrin, but they're not really syncing up so that's kind of tough we definitely want to make sure that that's going to get balanced out um Goss is there we're going to put him and Byram together I think that'd be really good for those two to learn from each other and um that top pairing so is it Chikrin that's not running with everybody or is it the could be Chikrin yeah okay so let's see who else we got scratched here. So we, um, Forrester, Larson, and a second. That's not bad because ooh, Larson and two seconds. So let's see if they only want Larson in two seconds. And let's try to add in a draft pick here. I'm really big on the 22 draft. I really like Brad Lambert and obviously really like. Shane Wright. So let's 
try to get to 22 draft pick here. So they do want a little bit more, a little bit more weight to it here. So I'm not gonna let Sillinger or Volstad go. Volstad is, he, as I said earlier, goalie of the future. That's the, that's our guy. That's the guy that we're gonna. That's the guy we built around. He's gonna be our our boy. Give it two years, he'll be our uh, starting net miner. We'll uh, at that point we'll let go of most likely the other guys, and uh, that's where we're gonna end up at. So, all right, Brian Clark, second. First rounder, my apologies. And hmm. uh, Probert, Volstad, Forster. So this one's going to be the easiest one to hold off, I think. Let's just do Clark straight across. No draft pick. I'll switch it up a little bit. Okay, so Larson. Try to get that second or 22 first rounder, and then let's give up our 27 first. So, exactly the same deal that they already wanted, just with the top of the sweetener with the first rounder for us. Let's see. No, okay. So, then let's throw in. Let's throw in a third rounder here. They want the 23 third, so let's throw that in there. Yep, good. All right, let's take that. We're gonna go, Brand Clark is going to get called up to the show for us. Uh, we're gonna have to sign him first. So let's just set those rosters, okay. Let's go sign Brand Clark and Edmondson, and let's put those two on our back end. And they can our third pairing, the key, our young third pairing, the man, um, all unsigned. Okay, so Doan as well. Uh, let's go Edmondson. He's in the like 68 though, but you know what? He's going to develop quickly, so let's put him in. Let's offer him 75. He's going to take it. Brian Clark as well. Let's offer him 875. He's going to take it as well. And let's also sign for again 12 million a year that that was such a bad deal in so many ways for a lot of the teams that were involved in him not that he's a bad player when he was good but just the, the money really handcuffed a lot of teams and uh, yeah it, there was a lot a lot of teams that were struggling with him, with him. okay so Evanson and Clark two pretty Good prospects. Clark's obviously going to be in the CHL if I don't call him up. Uh, let's bring him up. And Edmondson, we can throw him back down if we need to. Um, other than that, let's see Doan we signed as well as So, okay. Let's, let's yeah, so let's go. Kobe Inko, he's going down. And Okay, 
so we have Tanner Janot, Clayton Keller, and Schmaltz is our top. And let's see, Abish. Okay. So not a bad little setup here of prospects. And it's on the bench. Byron McClark, that's, that's going to be a good be able to develop for both of these guys. Uh, I would like to see the idea is develop. We'll see how he works out. That's it's kind of bothering me that Chickering and Sider are running through there too, so we might have to play. So they're both they're both cycle. So he's a hold line pinch guy. He's a hold line balance. So let's go change the Wants us to stay within the profit margins, upgrade the parking lot, upgrade the store, and 77% uh, concession fan happiness. My question to anybody that um, might be watching, what are your thoughts on how the Coyotes arena situation is going to be next year? I think it's going to be the fact that they're going to be playing in an arena that has less than 8,000 fans. I mean, not that they get sellouts right now either, but if you're a player coming in, you know, as a young player or as a young prospect, like, are you going to be excited about that? Like, yeah, of course you're playing in the NHL and you do get to play, um, you know, you do get to play in a lot of those other amazing arenas around the country and uh, obviously in Canada as well too, but like, are you going to be, you know, are you going to be excited about it? Playing at ASU, you know, for essentially what is probably going to end up being the, you know, the, the fan section, which is okay, but you know, are you going to get jacked up for that? Like, how, you know, how is that going to play out? I, I'm really, I'm really curious how that's going to work. Pretty gritty guy, third and a seventh. That's not bad at all. Team shop and a fifth. Uh, that might be what I do. I might just flip Fisher for. Uh, Fisher and a first for a first and Barkley Kudro. Let's see. Let's see how this plays out. Good. I do like these jerseys though. I'm a fan. Um, yeah. Definitely like the Kachina jerseys better than the, the old Coyote ones. Oh, look at that. 76 overall offense, 85 defense, 79 goalie. Here we go. Let's see how this is going to go. Really curious how this is going to play out. Oh. I'll take it. Early penalty. Let's do it.
have to say though, one thing that I've really enjoyed about this year's edition is uh, the goal is being able to get across Curry's a lot more. You can't uh, you can't just spam score that all the time, which is huge. That shot. Alright. Lucas Raymond, though, good player to uh, also to build around. A couple that Detroit team. I mean, they've got a couple pieces there that I think they're going to be set for a while. See how they do this year in the draft too, and then uh, yeah, next couple years I think they're gonna they're gonna start breaking out. I mean, they've been doing pretty good, a lot better than I think a lot a lot of people anticipated them doing already too. So, oh come on, good save. Yep, there we go. First NHL goal. Oh boy. That's big. Alright, let's get going. Keep that momentum going here. You know, I'll get the young kids out there. Let's go. Fire them in. Brandon Duhame's underrated too. Uh, forward from Minnesota. Minnesota's another team. They have quite a few young guys. I mean, Caprisov, they've got that Moldy, and they have uh, Brandon Duhame as well too. They've got a pretty good young young set of uh, forwards there. There, uh, Carson Lambo's coming as a D-man coming, and a couple other guys too. I think they'll be, uh, they'll be pretty good, I think, given a couple years as well. Like, obviously, they're decent right now, but
still can't believe Patrick Lyon went from being almost one of the faces in the NHL. Now he's kind of in Columbus. He's just there. He didn't even get an opportunity to go to the college. Harry Pagano, big acquisition there. through the crease that's the worst good rebound good positioning just puts it right through the crease oh damn it oh thought that was a goal for sure most of the time those turn into anytime the anytime the computer gets that cross crease it usually turns pretty quickly into a turns pretty quickly into a red light flashing behind you Oh, here we go. Oh, Raymond. Enjoy the two pad stack there, though, from the goalie. Don't see that too often very much, so it's kind of funny. <laughs> All right, big face off here. Get it out. Oh, that was damn it. Get that puck. Broberg just keeping his feet still. That's a goal. <sighs> That's tough. That's really tough. Young decor gets stuck. It comes down to young. Young. That's all right. Knew it going in. Knew it going in. Two tough shifts here in a row. Oh, two tough shifts. Let's go. All right. Big time for oh, Phil Kessel taking the face off here too. Good. Uh, oh, let's go. Oh, lost. All right. Stuck together like that, like 
like that. We just get the two guys just stuck. They just don't want to move. Oh. Tough, tough change. That's right. Get some fresh legs up there. Get the PK going. Move the puck to the way. rejuvenated himself in the, in the desert a little bit for sure. Really good player. Uh, yeah. Really good player. 21 to 8 shots here, but uh, face-offs not doing so good. Passing percentage not so good. Cider too plays well for a big guy. He moves. He moves really well. Oh, snipe! I'll take it. Yeah, I think he'll be our uh, probably be our leading goal goal scorer. Just the way he, uh, puck on the string movement and the way that he uh, has been able to shoot the puck. This roster update too. This is the. Uh, I think it's the 2v3. You can definitely tell a difference between this one and the other ones. Um, just from doing the other franchises, he definitely made some adjustments to a couple players that are, are noticeable already. Just didn't play in this game. Oh. Right in the 
chest. All right, let's try to push the lead here a little bit. Cylinder, pretty good face off guy. That is something that I've noticed the, the D from the AI does quite a bit. They'll circle back in their, in their zone and uh, be able to pinch down on them with it if you get a good four check going. Ooh, five minute. Huh. That's huge. Five minutes. Let's go. Yeah, we gotta get Chris off that part. Right? So, uh, oh, pucks it in front of the net, and guys just skate away from it. got really good passing ability. That's awesome. It's big having a right shot D-man to try to face him off there. See that lane through.
First game, first career hat trick. Not a bad little start here to the uh, Yotes franchise. Maybe that uh, first overall pick in 2022 will end up being not as, as valuable as I hoped. I say that and then I'll simulate. Nice to see the defenseman pinching up, not always on the uh, on the penalty kill, but Siders pinched in a few times to try to get into the offensive action.
<laughs> Point one. That's the worst. It stops it right on. Thank you to everybody that tuned in and uh, catch you soon.